Today, guys, we are going over how to set up our ARC server on gportal. Now, first off, we need to buy a server. So let's go ahead to gportal's website. And then after we log in or register, we're going to head to the left hand side of the screen where you can see that it says game servers. And then go ahead and click on that to go to the server page. Now on the game server page, guys, you can scroll down to see a bunch of games listed or simply search for your game if you don't see it. Now, ARC is, of course, in the A's, so it's at the top. And we can see this clear as day. Now, there's two different options here. Make sure to pay attention to the server that you're clicking on, because as you can see, one of these is for PC, the little symbol. The other one is actually for console, PS4 and PS5. It says it right there. Now, once we click order, it will now take us to the rental page. Here, we can choose a server setup, or we can choose to customize our own setup. We can change how many slots for the different players we want, and of course, how many days for how long we want to run the server. And now, we can hit continue to go ahead and pay. After you submit your payment, it will load a new screen thanking you for your order. And it will give you a couple of options. Here, we'll actually be able to click this button to activate the server. And then you'll see it immediately switches over and asks us if we want to go to the game server configuration. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now, we can also get here, guys, by clicking my servers from the home screen and then choosing the ARC server that's listed here that we want to edit. That's going to take us over to the settings page as well. Now, we head to the left-hand side of the screen again. And this time, we're going to click Basic Settings to load in a new page. At the top here, we can see a few page layout options next to the Settings search bar. Now, most of these should be pretty straightforward when we're looking at them, but I'm going to go through a bunch of them here with you. Now, this is where I'll change the server name and, of course, where I choose the map that I want to play on. You can also set up the server and admin passwords here. Make sure to read the little toggle buttons because some of them are like these anti-cheat options right here, and these are already turned on. So you might just want to familiarize yourself with what these are. And right here, guys, you can change your message of the day for when your server loads up each time people get on. Now, these settings are for admins here, ban list, for example, or white list, if there's specific people you want to make admins or add to the list to get rid of. The force dino respawn button here is actually a useful one for me and one that I recommend using all the time just to make sure to keep those dino spawns fresh. The broadcast message is for a server restart if you want to let people know what's coming. And then this section here is actually specifically for setting up the New Year's event on the server. The next section, guys, is the travel settings, which refers to the settings for downloading and uploading onto different maps and servers. And then we come to the more important section of gameplay. Here, we see the rest of the events that we can activate along with our difficulty offset and override, which of course dictate the max level of wild dino spawns on the map. One, for example, is level 150 max. Now, this here is the server PVE toggle alongside with the hardcore mode toggle button as well. The Fjordor traversal buff is a setting we haven't seen before along with the Fjordhawk item retrieval settings. So make sure to read all of these guys, because I was unfamiliar with even a few of these. And then, of course, we have the option to disable missions on Genesis, or use the single-player settings on any of our servers. Below that, we have a bunch of settings for PvE and PvE auto timers, stuff like if PvE is automatically going to come on to your PvP server for a certain time of the day. I don't typically use these much, but they're here and you can use them. I do, however, like to toggle on our floating damage text, floating names, hit markers, and crosshair options on every server that I do set up. The next few settings are to change our general and specific 
XP multipliers for our in-game leveling. Everything from crafting to harvesting, you can change it right here. This is also where we're going to enable our custom recipes. And more importantly, where we're actually going to increase our stack size for holding in-game resources. That's always something that people want to know. How do we increase our stack size? Now, the next handful of settings, guys, are very specific to HLNA and the Hexagon store from the Genesis DLC. I personally like this a lot. I thought it was very, very cool that we could change these different missions to make them more worthwhile. Our next section, guys, the world settings, revolves around the resources available around the server. Harvesting efficiency and multipliers, along with crop growth and crop decay settings. All of this can be changed. I can also change the loot quality and our day cycle speed settings right here. Finally, I always disable the fog. Nobody likes the fog. Next up, guys, the structure section gives you control over the building settings on the map. Where you can build, where you can't build, and of course, the strength of the structures you do build. Most of these toggle buttons are for decaying and or abandoned structures across your server. Make sure to check these out, but it's really more for server maintenance to prevent lagging. I do like being able to disable the structure pickup timer right here and change the battery slash fuel consumption multipliers here at the end of the section. The character section up next, guys, will give you the ability to make character adjustments. The first few settings adjust our health, damage, resistance, and stamina. But as we can see, more toggles all the way down the line. We have toggles for corpse locator, the map player location, enabling third person mode. All of these I find extremely useful. And in this area, you can switch on diseases, unlimited respects, friendly fire, or even creative mode. Like I said, full character control. This, of course, brings us to the dino settings section that we need to set up as well. Now, the first couple settings are for taming. I love that we can adjust the passive feed timer. That is new to me. I really like that. And, of course, we have our normal mating settings listed here below. So we'll recognize how quickly they mate, how frequently they mate, our egg hatch speed, and our most important settings, the baby mature speed, huddle interval multiplier, and the baby imprint amount. These guys do need to be changed just like this to make sure that you have quick breeding with easy 100% imprints. I skip over the remaining baby settings to the regular dino settings here, where again, we can deal with changing their dino damage, resistance, stamina, food, torpor, even how quick or how slow they lay eggs and poop. Complete control over the dino settings, guys. No problem. Make sure to look through all of them, though, when you're setting up your server, just in case. Now, the next little section, guys, is specific to mods, but not too, too important for our setup in particular. Now, the chat settings are listed here, guys, for you to check out. And then finally, the procedural section, we will skip completely. Now, we can head to the top of the page and click the Save button. On the left-hand side, we can click Engine Settings to make additional changes to our server. Change any of these stat multipliers listed to change the base stat setting on the server. For example, if I change the player weight, the character's base weight would start much higher than the normal 100 you usually start with. Remember to save changes that you make on this page or it will not apply to the server. Finally, guys, under the content section on the left-hand side, let's go ahead and click Mods to head to the Mod Setup page. Now, when we scroll down, we can see the different mods listed to install. We can also search for different mods like this. For example, Dino Overhaul X pops right up. We can click Install to move it to the Installed Mods section, and then click Active Toggle Button to enable the mod on the server. 
from there, guys, just restart your server and you're good to go. Now, guys, to join the server directly, click join server at the top of the page. Now, this will take some time and it basically starts a series of loading pages. First, it's going to load the ARC game directly on your home screen. And then once the game is loaded, it's going to automatically jump you in to attempting to join your server directly. And this message box pops up here for a little bit, and then eventually it will take you to the normal load screen that we're used to before seeing our character setup page. And of course, you can also find your server by clicking join from the home screen. Now, from here, guys, you need to choose your map, make sure you're not on official servers, all of that kind of stuff. And then you just have to let the servers load in. This is going to take a ton of time, especially if you just set up your server. Honestly, I usually don't see my server for like 5 to 15 minutes after I click start. So at the end of the day, you are going to have to be patient, but eventually your server will pop up under the search and you will be able to load into it just like normal. Now, me, I'm going to go play some docs and I will catch you guys in the next one.